Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the next single cam engine that I'm building. So I have a EG hatch at my shop that I'm probably gonna be building this uh, setup for. Car I picked up, you guys can go check out uh, in a couple previous videos. I talked about this little red EG hatch that I picked up. It's a fairly clean EG hatch that, uh, for at least in Wisconsin, it's fairly clean. It has very minor rust and the whole like chassis and underbody and everything like that is super clean. Uh, currently has a D15B, uh, but we're gonna be swapping it and I'm gonna be building a single cam and I want this to be probably, it's probably gonna be like, I say this now, but it might not hold true, but I want this to be the last single cam I build. Like I want this to be a good one and I wanna show you guys what you can do with a single cam, with some compression, a properly sized turbo, and everything else supporting around it to make a fun and fast single cam. Um, a lot of single cams that uh, I, I tune, I tune cars all the time and I tune a lot of single cams for guys and a lot of them, you guys can probably relate if you've ever built the turbo single cam, they're just like Bleh. And then when they finally come into boost, they're not that impressive. Like once they finally come into boost, it's not like crazy, you know? Where like a Turbo VTEC B series or a Turbo VTEC K series car, if it does have turbo lag, at least when it lights off, it's exciting. Uh, but single cams, they don't really make a lot of horsepower naturally aspirated. And when you put a turbo on them, you, uh, you really gotta crank the boost up pretty high to get uh, some excitement out of the thing. Cause a lot of times guys oversize the turbos and stuff that they run on these things, the basic eBay kits and uh, stuff like that are still pretty lazy on a stock single cam. Um, yeah, but anyways, I'm gonna show you guys some of the parts that I'm thinking I'm gonna put together for this uh, little D16 Z6 that I picked up over here. I actually bought this engine uh, from an auction site here locally and the guy the listing literally just said Honda motor and I had a picture of it and it looked like that and I'm like that looks like a z6 valve cover and I want it <laughs> So I went and picked it up. I didn't even know the engine code. I didn't even ask the guy any questions I'm just like hey, I'll be I'll pick it up like let me just come get it. So I got it for a hundred bucks It's a complete D16 Z6 long block. So this is what we're going to be starting the build with. Uh, we're gonna have to take this thing down and uh, check it out, make sure that the crank is still good, make sure that there's no cracked cylinders um, and stuff like that. So this, in my opinion, is the best Honda single cam engine you can use. You can use the D16 Y7, the Y8, all that kind of stuff, but I think the Z6 Top to bottom is the best. Um, there's a lot of guys, you know, doing mini me's and stuff like that. D15 with a Z6 head, or the D16 Y7 with Y8 head, or whatever, vice versa. Um, it's just uh, I like keeping the parts on what it came off of, and the Z6 oils the best. It has like a cross-drilled crank for oiling on both sides, where like the D16Y motors, which came out with the OBD2 cars. Uh, 96 and newer Hondas had the D16Y series single cam engines and they just didn't oil that good and stuff like that. So if you guys are building a turbo single cam with some rods and pistons and stuff like that, uh, I would suggest at least putting a Z6 crankshaft in your Y series block uh, because, uh, or if you are using the D16Y series engine and crankshaft and everything, just don't get greedy with RPM. Keep the RPM rev limiter at 7,000 RPM. Don't go above that because if you do go above that with that you know, single oil drilled uh, thing on the crank, they, like I said, they don't oil good. Um, you will spin bearings. Uh, I've tried back in the day, if you guys watch back on my channel, I had the uh, cobweb covered Civic that me and my buddy built probably like 10 years ago now. Um, and then we busted it out of the cobwebs in that video a long time ago. Uh, that car had, I don't know, four or five different D16 Y8s 
uh, that we put together. We tried Y7 cranks, Y8, all of it, and they all spun bearings. It, it just, we, we, no matter what we did, like we set the oil clearances on the bearings uh, bigger, uh, we used different oils, we tried everything, and it just, they spun every time. Like, no getting around it. <laughs> so, and then once we switched that car over to a Z6 crank, all the bearing failures went away. Car never spun a bearing after that. That motor still runs to this day. And sorry, uh, lack of videos and stuff lately, guys, and this one's probably just gonna be a little bit of talking and stuff. Um, I've been sick uh, for the last, like, week, and just slammed with orders and stuff for hunter2.com. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. Thanks uh, again for supporting me and my website. Uh, it, it means the world to me guys and there's just, uh, I don't even know what to say uh, other than, uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much for all the support guys. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. So like I said, this is the $100 Z6 complete motor. We're gonna tear this down in an upcoming video and uh, we're gonna show, see what's inside of that thing. Uh, but I did wanna kinda show some of the parts that we're gonna use on this thing. Uh, you guys already saw the turbo manifold that I picked up in uh, one of the previous videos. I did actually talk about like, you know, the best budget turbo manifold you can get for your Honda. It was for this project. So I picked up this PLM top mount uh, D-series manifold from Burton Racing and I recently just got my turbocharger from VS Racing so uh, this is actually a new turbo that we're probably going to be offering soon on Hunter2.com this is a 48 49 size turbo so this thing is fairly small but it will support 500 horsepower and with the combination of parts that I got going on here guys with this little Z6 I think we're gonna be able to make full boost probably around 3,000 rpm and carry all the way to 7500 um, so we're gonna have a huge power band window and I can't wait to show you guys how responsive and fun I can make this little single cam and it doesn't have to be a laggy slow low compression got a clutch kick it to get it moving kind of car. Like this thing should just light up and rip. So that's the turbo and stuff that I'm gonna be using. I might talk about this more if you guys are interested uh, in a uh, future video. It is actually a V-band configuration. So this is a V-band 73AR housing, I believe. And I actually opted to do the T3 to V-band housing adapter. Uh, I was actually thinking about just cutting this manifold and welding a V-band on, but I'm going to keep this manifold T3, so if I ever want to change to a little bit larger turbo later, I can. Uh, so this is like the little T3 adapter thing. Um, but yeah, this turbo should do really well. I'm really excited to show you guys the response and stuff of this unit. And it is also reverse rotation. So on these top mount manifolds, so on this top mount manifold, yeah, it's an AR72, it says there. Uh, on these top mounts, if you have a turbo, normal rotation turbos, put the compressor outlet right here. And when you're trying to feed intercooler piping right here, it can be a little tricky. So you can imagine, and watching some of my other videos, you'll see top mount manifolds where the intercooler piping runs really close to the exhaust runners. So these reverse rotation turbos that I'm going to be offering very soon on my website, you guys will have to wait and see and uh, check it out when they come about. You can see now that our intercooler piping can run out here, to completely away from the exhaust manifold. So we'll be able to route our intercooler piping a lot easier and not and get it away from the heat Woo, woo, so we're gonna see how that combination works once we get this thing in the car. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over some of these parts in this video, guys. Uh, I'm really excited. And uh, it's just uh, gonna be a really cool single cam build. So a subscriber actually sent me uh, a set of these Speed Factory no notch connecting rods. So these are the custom length Speed Factory uh, connecting rods, which uh, put your Viterra piston all the way to the top of the deck. So if you guys use a standard length uh, D-series connecting rod, 
um, and you use the Viterra pistons, the piston won't actually come all the way up to the deck surface and you're losing out on compression. So if you use a standard length rod with the Viterras, I think the compression's like seven and a half to one or something like that. Back to my sound clip of burr, and then it finally lights off. The more compression we can put in this motor, the less time it's gonna be spent going burr, and the more time it's gonna be spent going burr. So using the Speed Factory long, no-notch connecting rods, uh, it's a slightly longer rod, and it can put the piston all the way at the top of the deck with a Viterra. Um, I'm opting to try a different piston, and I don't know if it's going to work with these uh, no-notch, longer D-series rods, but I'm willing to try it. These are the PG-6 pistons they are uh teflon coated they're a cast piston um same as the viterra except a viterra piston a viterra has a dish these have a very very slight dome to them you can't even probably see it on camera it's a very slight dome um but i like running a flat top or a very very slight dome piston in a lot of my builds because I run E85 in everything I run. Uh, and the Viteras, I'm actually going to open this box here, and like I said, a subscriber actually sent in the uh, rods and these Viterra pistons because he bought this combo for a setup and, uh, you know, stuff came up and he wasn't actually going to be able to use it. So he... Uh, opted to send the stuff my way and I'm very thankful and I can't thank this subscriber enough. Um, I'll actually uh, maybe ask him if he has uh, Instagram or something he wants me to shout out. Uh, he didn't say anything, uh, you know, he didn't want anything from me. So um, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe if he's watching this he'll, he'll reach out. <laughs> but um, so let's compare this uh, Viterra. So you can see a Viterra piston has this dish it's like a cereal bowl. I mean, you could fill this thing up with some Cheerios and milk and have yourself a quick little snack, you know what I'm saying? So um, we're going to uh, not run these because we want compression. Um, but maybe we'll use them in something else. This, on the other hand, is the PG-6. And you can see the difference between the dish and the dome or the flat top over here. And uh, we're going to see... With these PG-6 pistons, the uh, wrist pin height seems the same as the Viterra. It's pretty close. And there was one guy on Facebook, I think, that said that he ran this combination. And it was like 11 and a half to 1 compression. And uh, it worked great. Um, I don't know. We're going to have to wait until we get the motor tore down to see if we're going to be able to run this piston. Um with this rod worst case scenario we're gonna have to use the speed factory rods with the viteras and then i'm gonna have to get a standard length rod for these uh and i ha i do have two of these little single cam motors that i might be putting together so um yeah but that's the rod and piston combination i'm planning on using you guys will have to let me know if you ran something like this before or uh stay tuned and subscribe to my channel uh like this video if it's uh entertaining or fun or stupid or anything like that you guys will just have to stay tuned and see uh once we get this motor tore down uh what the piston height looks like in the in the block uh you guys know i've done a couple little hybrid you know thrown together builds in the past and i've used like b16 stuff in an lsv tech and blah 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 and i had a bunch of issues with like pistons not coming up to the deck and then coming out too far and I played with a bunch of different connecting rods on that motor that ran in the Barney Civic. If you guys watched back then, uh, that car made over 600 horsepower for quite some time and then I sold the car. So yeah, I hope uh, these things don't come out of the deck, but we're gonna find out. You know, like I said, you guys will just have to stay tuned. Um, I'm hoping I can do some more videos here coming soon. I just wanted to get something out to you guys and show you some of these cool parts. And last but not least, I cannot um, believe that I finally got myself a Skunk 2 Ultra Race intake manifold. This thing looks so cool. 
just awesome. I paired it with a Jack Spania Racing 90 millimeter throttle body. Um, I've been working with Jack Spania on some stuff that you guys will be seeing very soon as well. Um, if you guys want to check out Jack Spania Racing, I actually will have an affiliate link down below. So if you guys click the uh, link in my description of the video and purchase anything from Jack Spania, I might get a little bit of a kickback. So, um, you know, you guys can always check, uh, you know, support the channel that way too, if you want. Um, I don't really know. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Skunk 2 Ultra Manifold. I'm going to try out on this single cam. Obviously, this thing is probably super overkill, but I wanted the engine bay to look a certain way when I put this car together, and this intake manifold just had to be part of the picture to do that. So uh, I really am curious how this thing is going to perform versus like a you know standard Skunk 2 manifold or a you know a stock Y8 manifold because the stock Y8 intake manifold is like the best, you know? Um, but I don't think it's gonna pass up the old Skunk 2 race ultra manifold. And then on this manifold, I have a Hunter tuned fuel rail. So that's all looking nice with the Hunter tuned top hats and the Hunter tuned injectors all in here. I actually have some Hunter tuned AN line as well that are all going into the fuel rail on feed and return um like i said guys i'm really sorry for the lack of videos and maybe this video is a little bit you know sporadic whatever i'm just showing some of the parts that i'm going to use on this single cam and we'll get to building it real soon i just wanted to give you guys some sort of a video uh for now and uh maybe get you a little bit hyped for the upcoming single cam build <clears throat> but like i said i've been swamped with the website guys i actually have um a bunch of new products on the website if you guys want to check out huntertune.com i have uh, these custom an wrenches now so this is a so this is a custom hunter tuned an wrench with the pistol grip so when you take off your an fittings it won't scratch up the fittings and stuff and you can see here that they're like labeled uh yeah so you guys can pick one of these up they're like 30 bucks um help support the channel I also got like catch can fittings. I got a bunch of other fittings and AN line all now on the website. So you guys can build your own fuel system if you want. Um, I got a lot of stuff coming, but uh, I'm only one guy. <laughs> so my main uh, focus lately has just been plugging website orders and stuff. And uh, we're going to grow this online business. Uh, hopefully to something pretty cool. And I can't wait to show you guys more products on the way. There's a ton of stuff coming. Um... And thank you again for all the support and <clears throat> everything you've given me uh, over the years. I am great, very grateful, and I can't wait to help more of you guys out and uh, start selling some more awesome products. <clears throat> and a side note, if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, you're probably a uh, true supporter of Hunter Tuned. And you know that I've been looking for a shop closer to home. Uh, over the last like year or two, I've been kind of... Um, not liking the drive and stuff going to my shop all the time because it's a you know a little bit of a drive and uh i found a shop i'm moving in march 1st and it's like a minute from my house so have a great night and a better tomorrow guys god bless we will see you later uh i hope you guys are stoked for this little single cam build i know i am